RTX 3090 vs 3080. The next generation of NVIDIA GPUs has arrived. The new Ampere architecture promises a major performance increase and NVIDIA has made some bold statements about its gaming ability. Both the RTX 3090 and RTX 3080 are incredibly powerful cards that reside at the top of the stack. They are, however, some of NVIDIA's most expensive mainstream cards to date. Here is how the two stack up in terms of efficiency, features and price. Stick to the end as we will share game tests as well. Before we start, go ahead and subscribe. Also, press the bell button to get the latest updates. Without any further delay, let us start. Both the RTX 3090 and 3080 made their global debut on September 1, 2020. The RTX 3080 is available for $699, while the 3090 is available for $1499. The prices or release dates that we are telling you are only for NVIDIA's Founder Edition cards. MSI, PowerColor, Palette, Gamewood and Inno3D are among the add-in board partners, who have already revealed their own versions of the RTX 3090, 3080 and the 3070. With so many choices for each of these top-tier GPUs, it is possible that third-party alternatives will arrive alongside or shortly after NVIDIA's own Founders Edition options. Depending on their cooling and clock rates, their pricing is a combination of marginally cheaper and significantly more expensive cards. If you look at specs and performance, despite the fact that NVIDIA has not confirmed it, it appears that the 3090 is replacing the Titan RTX, which is supported by the specifications. NVIDIA's top-of-the-line Ampere GPU matches the Titan RTX with a huge 24GB of GDDR6X memory. With 10 gigabits of GDDR6X, the RTX 3080 is more conservative, but both cards increase memory speed and bandwidth over the previous generation. The 3080 outperformed the 2080 Super and 2080 Ti. In a variety of NVIDIA chosen games such as Control, Doom Eternal and Borderlands 3, Digital Foundry found the 3080 to give between a 60 and 90% performance improvement over the RTX 2080. That was at 4K resolution and with all settings at their highest, with and without ray tracing available. Even though DLSS was needed to achieve a comfortable 60 frames per second at 4K with ray tracing at its highest setting, this is still a remarkable achievement that demonstrates the 3080's progress over its Turing predecessors. The 3090 is even better. It has 20% more CUDA cores than the 3080, 23% more memory bandwidth, and almost 2.5 times the memory speed. With DLSS enabled, the 3090 can deliver 60 frames per second at 8K resolution, according to NVIDIA. That means the RTX 3090 can deliver 100 frames per second at 4K without ray tracing or 60 frames per second at 4K without the use of DLSS. In comparison to the previous generation, the RTX 3080 and 3090 draw more power. On the reference design, the cards need 320 watts and 350 watt at stock, respectively, and are powered by NVIDIA's new 12-pin power connector. Third-party solutions seem to work just fine with dual 8-pin connectors, so NVIDIA's latest connector design might not be essential. Both cards wanted a new Founders Edition cooler, with a dual push-pull fan design and a V-shaped PCB to keep them cold. Despite the increased efficiency, NVIDIA claims that this new design allows air to flow more easily through the case, allowing the cards to run at much lower noise levels than previous generations. The RTX 3080 is a significant improvement over the RTX 2080 and GTX 1080 Ti. Make sure your power supply can support the RTX 3080 as NVIDIA's latest Ampere GPU architecture and ultra-fast GDDR6X memory modules draw a lot more power than previous GeForce generations. 
The new cooler makes the 3080 a big card, almost an inch longer and slightly taller than the 2080 Ti. The 3090, dubbed a BFGPU by NVIDIA, is 12.3 inches long and 5.4 inches tall, a full inch taller and longer than the 3080. This raises some concerns about clearance in smaller situations. Since it's a triple slot design, it won't fit into a mini ITX case or a motherboard. Despite these improvements, third-party alternative cooling designs are likely to be more powerful, louder, and larger. The 3080 and 3090 are built around ray tracing and DLSS. With ray tracing allowed, NVIDIA's redesigned RT cores offer up to two times the performance of Turing. Both cards offer higher frame rates with ray tracing and higher resolutions when paired with DLSS when compared to the last generation. Despite the fact that 4K is the current priority, both cards support 8K through three HDMI 2.1 ports and a single DisplayPort 1.4a port. NVIDIA's benchmarks show the 3090 achieving over 60 frames per second at 8K with ray tracing and DLSS in games like Apex Legends and Destiny 2. NVIDIA Reflex is also new to the RTX 30 series of GPUs. You may use Reflex to minimize device latency in competitive games if you have an RTX 3080 or 3090 and a G-Sync display. With Reflex switched on, NVIDIA's benchmarks show a moderate improvement in overall device latency and a significant improvement when combined with a high refresh rate monitor and a 30 series GPU. A new RTX I.O. is also intriguing, as it could use the GPU to manage data decompression from storage, allowing developers to take better advantage of PCI Express storage drives for faster load times and reduced pop-in. However, since the GTX 10 series, this feature will be available on all NVIDIA's GPUs. The only major difference between the 3080 and the 3090 is that the RTX 3090 supports dual-core GPU setups via SLI. The RTX 3080, on the other hand, does not help this, so it was likely to have more RT and tensor cores. We would like to suggest the RTX 3090 over the 3080 because of its outstanding specs, but we cannot because of the price. In terms of being a Titan RTX replacement, the 3090 is an expensive card built more for media creators and data scientists than gamers. Even though it is the fastest GPU available for gaming, most people will not pay $14.99 for the whole system, let alone an only a graphics card. With such a high price tag, the RTX 3090 would almost certainly only be used by the most dedicated gamers. The RTX 3080 should prove to be a capable 4K gaming CPU, and it's a better deal at $699. Because of all the RTX 3080 has to offer at such a low price, it will most likely be gamers' ultimate high-end option. It's called NVIDIA's flagship GPU for a reason. If you do not want to spend the extra money on an RTX 3090, but still want to game at 4K with smooth frame rates, the RTX 3080 is a great option. It has the same features as the RTX 3090 and is a better choice if you are looking for pure gaming results. That's all for today, folks. Tell us in the comment section what is your point of view about the RTX 3090 and 3080. See you soon with yet another amazing video. Thank you.